So far we've been looking at energy and we've been looking at work. So we've done some things with the definitions of energy and we've been working with work, ha ha ha. Um, so then we can actually take a look at some graphs. Uh, but before then I just want to talk to you about this here. Now this right here when we talk about doing work, you know like this example right here, if I'm lifting weights, this is, a, I mean this means that you have to expend energy to do this. I remember um, I used to have a job at a hard rock cafe, this is in Canada, and I remember I was a busboy, so my job was to carry beer basically from the basement up to the top floor all the time. And I hated doing it just because, well, first of all, I'm not a very big guy, so it was very, very heavy. But also, um, I mean, I had to go up the stairs all the time, so I was sort of, you know, lifting some sort of weights, in this case beer, uh, in a vertical distance upwards. Now it didn't matter the path that I took. But I remember at some point I decided, because I was uh, just studying physics at the time, so I was still doing my, my bachelor degree in physics. And so I remember uh, I decided one day to calculate how much work I had done against gravity that day. And it was a little bit sad because obviously when I'm carrying all this weight up, you know, you're doing a lot of work against gravity. And it doesn't matter what path you take, as long as you raise it straight up, you know, then it's going to be the same amount of work done against gravity. So I just remember getting a little bit uh, depressed with all the work that I was doing, you know, going up uh, the stairs. But let's take a look at this. Uh, a practical example here is we can look at graphs of force versus displacement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, just write down the equation for work. So work is the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them, where this is a vector and that's a vector. So what this means then is that, uh, well, maybe I'll just give you the answer here. So work done. is the area under a force versus displacement graph. Oops, I need to remember how to spell here. Displacement graph. So maybe, maybe we should look at a little example here. So what if I have something like this? Let's say I'm looking at um, Let's say an experiment with a spring, maybe. So I'll just write that down. Experiment with oops, a spring. So let's say then I've, uh, this is also kind of a boring experiment, but it works really nice. It's good to practice, you know, getting data points here. So let's say I have some sort of mass hanging on the end of a spring here. Now what happens is, it depends on the mass here, but the heavier the mass, then the more this spring will displace. So I could consider the displacement maybe, uh, you know, being some sort of distance. Let's say when I didn't have the mass on it, maybe the, you know, the spring was only like up to here. So this here would, would represent my displacement. So what I would do then, let's say I, I did an experiment and I actually got a bunch of data points. So I could actually sit there and do this. I just need the same spring, let's say, and a whole bunch of different masses to hang on the end of the spring. And if you know about masses on springs, well then we could actually figure out the applied force. This is the force in Newtons. This is the applied force. So in this case, that would be this applied force going down here. This is F applied. Now remember that applied force is because we have a mass. It turns out if you multiply the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, then you get the force. So you could actually measure this force. Um, or if you have a little device, it turns out there's really neat little things where you can actually just uh, have a little force meter and actually measure this. But that's, that's okay. You can just do it with mass as well. But what if then you looked at this versus the displacement? You know, from equilibrium, so that would be in meters. So you have, you know, some values here for force and you have corresponding displacements for those forces. Well, then you could decide to graph that. So let's say I do a graph of... Wow, this top line was actually quite ver uh, straight. I'm pretty impressed. So this right here would be the applied force in Newtons, and this right here would be the displacement, which would be in meters. Now, we expect this to be linear. We expect it to pass through the origin, because zero displacement should be because we have zero extra applied force. So we should have something that goes you know, close to something like this, some sort of graph like that. Well, it turns out then, look carefully at this equation right here. We say that the work done is equal to the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle. But if we've got the displacement and the applied force being straight up and down, then we can say that the angle is going to be zero, 
um, or I suppose we could say 180 degrees. That's okay because then it's just going to make it a 1 or a negative 1 because cosine of 0 is 1, cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, which means we can basically, we can basically forget about this cosine term because it's either going to be 1 or negative 1, so we don't really care. So take a look then. That means that the work done is the force times the displacement. So look carefully at this graph. A nice easy trick that I like to use is whenever I'm not sure what to do with a graph, I always think, well, what, what can we do with a graph? What are the actual quantities we might want to measure? If it's a straight line, or even a curvy, weird-looking thing, we might want to know uh, what the maximum is or the minimum, but in this case it's just a line, so it doesn't really help. We might want to know what the y-intercept is, in other words, where it crosses the y-axis, in this case, where it crosses this one right here, so it crosses it right here. So at x equals 0, y equals 0. We might also want to know the slope. Remember, if we do the slope or the gradient of something, it means we take, you know, rise over run. So we would, you know, pick a point here, maybe a point over here. We would find, you know, how high this is and how far across this has gone. Now look carefully at the units of that, though. If I did the slope of this thing, I would have force you know, units of force divided by units of displacement, because I'd say rise over run, you know, or delta y over delta x. So look at this, I'd have force divided by displacement. That's not this, it's not force divided by displacement. So that means I can't use that, but that's why it's the area under a force displacement graph. Because another quantity you can always take from a graph, you can not only find the slope of, its, uh, of the graph, that, by the way, is called a derivative, uh, if you're looking in calculus. And this one right here, though, you can also take the area under a curve. So in this case, right here, from here, from this start point to this end point, let's say, let's say this right here is my sort of curve here, I can find that area. And I can say that area, well, let's see now, that area is going to have units of length times width, you know, or y times x. Because if I take the area of something, I do these things times these things. So in this case, right here, it would be obviously the the base times the height, I would divide it by 2 because it's a triangle. But, I mean, the, the actual shape doesn't really matter so much. The idea is the area is just going to be the work done. And the reason why that is is because we're going to have force times displacement. And that's force times displacement. So you see, just by looking at the units, even, you can do this. Or just by looking at the quantities here. So an area means it's like a length times a width. I mean, if it was a big rectangle, the area of a rectangle is just, you know, the height times the width here in this case. So I could say it's these things, so in other words, force, times these things, which is displacement. So force times displacement. And that's why it's F times S. So in this case, that, I hope, helps to solidify why it is that we say that the area under the curve is the work done. Um, so that hopefully helps here. There we go. I tried to fix the little e, but I think I made it worse. There we go. So the area equals the work done. So that's, I mean, you could actually do that. You could calculate the work done in this situation. So I hope that helps to explain a little bit about how we can deal with graphs as well.